Thus, I find myself in Bali on the last day of the famous actor's visit in Indonesia. To be in Bali anytime is a blessing. To be in Bali on a beautiful sunny day, to seek out a media shy but much sought after personality before he flies off is a big treat. And the Amankila Resort in Karangasem, Bali, with its breathtaking view of the deep blue sea, provides a picture perfect background to this unique encounter. Hello. Hello, I guess you're filming already. Hi, how are you? Yes, hi. Hi, it's so great you're to an old see you. Very old friend of yours. <laughs> no, is a good friend of yours. He says, you have to do this, you have to do this with my friend. And I'm so happy that yeah, you good. could spare time to do it. Bali was where Gia spent a few private days of holiday with his family after his hectic fortnight of travel to Asia and before going home. And coming to meet me at a bungalow in Amankila, he looks relaxed and refreshed. What can I call you? Richard. Okay, no, just Richard. Richard, yeah. Richard, it's great to have you here Thank in you so Indonesia. Much. So how are you enjoying your holiday? Well, you know, the camera angle you got here is incredibly beautiful. Maybe it'd be better without that ship out there. That could go away. But this is um, an extraordinary island. And I was, we have a mutual friend, Rio Helmi. And uh, the first time I came was 32 years ago, which was in many ways quite a different place then. I know that was before you were born, but... <laughs> Don't be too surprised. <laughs> has, has a lot changed? Yeah, I mean, there were no, very few cars at that point. There was no... I don't think there were phones. There were cell phones, certainly. Computers weren't around. It was still a very tribal village culture. Uh, everyone was still dressing as if it was a ceremony. You know, it was, everything was an offering. Um, I was telling my, my wife that I remember the first time I saw a television here was the time that Lady Di and Charles got married. And in the, the uh, community houses, the longhouses, mm -hmm. they would put the one television in the whole community, they'd set it up there and everyone would gather around on, in the pavilion there and, and watch the marriage of, of Di and Charles. They were very popular in this part of yeah, the world. Yeah, but that was the only time I ever saw them watching TV at that point. Everything was a ceremony. Everything was a blessing. Everything was still uh, connected to ancient culture. And I'm sure it is now, mm -hmm. still. I don't what think brought you there, then? Well, there's, there's always secret reasons for things and, and exoteric reasons for things. Um, I was on a, a long trip. I just started making movies, and I was with a wonderful girl, longtime girlfriend at that point, and she was a Brazilian painter. And we started in Cannes, because a film of mine was opening there. And uh, quite a wonderful film. It was my first film, actually, Days of Heaven. And we continued on there to India and Nepal and Thailand, and Bali was the destination. Sounds really romantic. It was, it was great. And it lived up to it. The whole trip was great, but I mean, we just ended up in Bali and the, the, the... I was always struck by the, the sense in Balinese that they were living in paradise. They knew they were in paradise. They had no reason or inclination to go anyplace else. They were living in a garden. You know, it's called the Isle of Gods. Yeah, and it still has that feeling, of course, you know, that this is a very special place. But I think all of Indonesia is a very special place. All these extraordinary islands, different cultures, different languages, different magic that's going on all over here, still being discovered. So 32 years later, is the magic still there for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's harder to see, and I, I think all of us who saw it that long ago uh, miss a certain color and magic that maybe is gone now. Ubud is, is maybe a little bit more like Central Pei than I would like to see. Uh, but you know, you see the, the, the beauty of the people. I mean, everyone we've met here has been so terrific 
and still has that essential quality of, of generosity and love and compassion and, and a sense of responsibility, emotional responsibility. You know, real, true loveliness, care, gentleness. Uh, it, you can't fake that. It has to be coming from your center, from your heart. Now you were also in Jakarta and in Jogja. Tell me uh, this about This was the you. first time. I mean, I've been here in Bali many times a long time ago, but I haven't been in Indonesia in uh, probably 25 years. Never in Java. So this was the first time there. So what was your impression, particularly well, of Well, I mean, it was very close. You know, I was there for a few days, and, and it was, uh, the, the aim of the trip was to going to Borobudur, which I had always wanted to go to, and for some reason I never had gone to. Um, and how was it? Was it up Borobudur to your expectations? Was extraordinary. I don't know, I had the great good fortune of having some people guiding me there who could uh, explain the finer points of what was going on in the and the carvings and the architecture and uh, great interplay. Um, my own learnings in terms of Vajrayana and Tantra uh, is obviously much more advanced than it was 25 years ago. So uh, you know, I, I was able to embrace uh, Borobudur in a different way now than I would have then. Uh, as this kind of great testament to uh, Vajrayana Buddhism. And you managed to do some meditation there. Oh, yeah. I insisted on that. You know, I said, I'm, I'm okay with, with uh, the photo opportunities, but I need quiet time here. And I need it for my family. I need, they need to feel this without photographers and, and uh, without people watching. So we had a lot of quiet time, and you which was very powerful. You know, there's, there's, there is something that is very pure, very um, representative of, of highest yoga tantra. Um, which is the most intense form of Vajrayana Buddhism.